Okay, let's discuss this inventory management model, which is called EOQ with quantity discounts. Uh, first of all, the idea is that we build on top of our standard basic EOQ model, the economic order quantity model, that assumes constant rate of demand and constant lead time with non-perishable inventory items. In addition, this time round, we'll take into account the discounts offered by supplier. So supplier uh, invites us to buy more, tempts us to buy more by giving us discounts when we purchase in larger quantities. The kind of offer supplier typically gives us will be a tiered discount table that looks something like this. So again, back to our tire example, each tire normally costs $20 per tire. So without um, buying in large quantities, 0 to 749, we'll be buying at $20 per tire. Um, if we buy more, but not a lot more, so supplier defines it as 750 to 199, We'll get one percent discount. Now it might not seem like a lot, but when you buy in large quantities, uh, one percent is still one percent. That can be still a lot of money. And uh, unit cost nineteen eighty and two thousand or more, uh, five thousand, six thousand tires nineteen sixty. So in this case, uh, first thing to recognize is that the uh, cost, the unit cost that we've been assuming. Uh, to be constant is no longer constant, right? So let's write that down. Uh, cost of tire is no longer constant with respect to Q, the order quantity, right? So we we'll like to still determine what is the best inventory model in the presence of discount. Remember what's the best inventory model, the best inventory policy, uh, how many to order, when to order, right? So question is how many should we order? Because now C is no longer a constant with respect to Q and we, we might uh, have to think about inventing a new theory. Uh, but answer is no, we don't have to because we are utilizing the EOQ model. So um, let's just take a look at uh, what, what this means, that C is no longer a constant with respect to Q. So uh, just now we had um, C, the, the unit cost, right? And it was basically $20 no matter how large or how small our order quantity was. So if we plot it against Q, uh, Q large, Q small, our C basically was a constant. All right. right now, however, our C is going to be true uh, at 720, only for up to uh, buying 7 149 tires from 750 onwards and I'm going to exaggerate the vertical separation we'll get 1980 all right all the way to thousand um, nine hundred and ninety nine all right so we'll get this all the way to this we'll get this all right and from 2000 onwards, we'll get $19.60. Now the green curve uh, is the new function, the new C function, the cost, the uh, unit tire cost function with respect to Q. Right, so uh, C is a function of Q and it is expressed as a, a graph, a table like this. So in some sense, uh, if you recall that in the basic EOQ model, we try to differentiate against Q. Now we cannot. Uh, second thing that, that results from this uh, observation is that uh, uh, early on C was constant, so uh, it was not available for optimization. That is, no matter how large or how small you buy uh, in terms of trans per, per, quant per transaction quantity, we still had to 
uh, pay at a cost of $20. But right now, C changes with the quantity used. So we uh, cannot really do that, and we must take into account uh, the cost of purchase because it changes at different uh, quantities being purchased. So we have to add that into our total cost. So what this means is that the total cost will have to include the uh, setup cost, the annual setup cost, right, plus the uh, annual uh, holding cost as before, plus uh, the purchase cost. Yeah, because it is going to be d times c cube, uh, d times c, which is a function of q. All right, let's come back to our slide here. So how do we go about it? Well, in the uh, in the inventory policy, we have assumed that all the conditions for basic EOQ is true. So we have constant rate of consumption, demand on us, uh, constant lead time, and we are also able to know uh, demand precisely and it doesn't change. Now, the other new concept that is introduced here is about the holding cost. Um, earlier on, we talked about holding costs, for example, for a tire that costs $20 per year, our holding cost might be $2 per tire per year. That is given as an absolute number. But typically, uh, it is also expressed as C times I, where I is what we call the inventory holding cost rate, or more correctly, the annual inventory holding cost rate. Uh, I works a little bit like the bank interest rate. When we borrow money, we have to pay the cost of the money. Uh, so I works a little bit like that, in the sense that uh, it gives us some, some feel about whether our holding cost is justifiable or, or reasonable with respect to the purchase cost C. The higher the purchase cost uh, for one unit of item, the higher would be the holding cost for one unit of item across the year. That sounds correct, but it should not be unreasonably high, higher, much higher. For example, if we buy a uh, $1,000 iPhone, for example, and you're thinking about buying a cover, you might think about buying a cover that costs $100 because it's a $1,000 iPhone that you want to protect and make it look good, right? So 10%, 10% is probably reasonable. Uh, if you purchase a mobile phone as well of XYZ brand and that costs, say, $100, you wouldn't be thinking about buying $100 uh, phone cover to protect a $100 phone because that will be 100% of the phone's cost. And uh, one wouldn't think that is very reasonable. I hope you will, will agree. So. Uh, it is not about the hundred dollar phone cover that is uh, of concern. It is the, uh, the the fact that relative to the cost of the item that you are protecting, that, that you're holding uh, good, it doesn't seem reasonable when it's hundred percent, and it seems much more reasonable when it's ten percent. Yeah. So so that's my iPhone example. So here, uh, back to what we have here, H equals to C times I. So C is again the unit cost of the tire, twenty dollars. I uh, would be expressed as a constant percentage. Example, suppose it is also 10%. Right? So 10% of $20 will be $2. And that sounds hmm, reasonable to hold a tire in good condition, ready for sale throughout the year. Now what if our tire, because of discount, the cost has been reduced? Now in our example, it's been reduced to $19.80 and $19.60. So maybe we didn't feel such a big change, but example, suppose it's 50% discount, then uh, one would feel that the holding cost ought to be reasonably reduced. And so if we hold H as a constant value, it wouldn't sound very reasonable, right? But if we express H as I times C, where I is a constant, say 10%, then when C is reduced to $10, I is still 10%, 
and that means that our holding cost should be reduced to one dollar per ten dollar tire per year and that sounds reasonable okay so uh, we're going to exactly use i as that now in our example here here the annual inventory holding cost rate i is given as 21 percent so we're going to do that now as a consequence of change in holding cost right uh, our order quantity will change if we use the eoq formula so if you recall that the eoq is basically the square root of 2 times d times s divided by h right where d capital d is the annual demand and capital s is the setup cost per order so when h changes our eoq will change right so uh, and indeed in this discount table h does change and so we have to substitute h into uh, eoq calculation each and every time for each tier to calculate the eoq so let's do that so the first thing you have to do is to calculate h Right. Then you must identify the EOQ that is uh, relevant to each tier by using the newly derived H. So we have that here. Um, and uh, our previous calculation with H being $4.20 right, uh, was how much? 5.73. And in the new calculation here, we should get something around 576. And finally, in the third tier situation, we'll get um, 579. All right, so I'll just peek forward a little bit. Uh, so we get 579. Okay, good. Now, remember, the first tier is applicable from 0 to 749. So let's put that down here. Uh, from 0 to 749, inclusive. Right, from 0 to 749. And the second tier is valid from the next uh, segment, next range, 749 to 1999. And finally, the third tier is valid from 2000 onwards. Okay, good. So why why do we need to uh, do this comparison? The idea is this. Um, when we look at the range and the newly computed EOQs, we see basically uh, a sort of a binary situation that EOQ is in the range or else EOQ is not in the range. So 573 is in the range. That means 573 is achievable. We can buy, that means make an order uh, at the quantity 573 and get the price $20, right? Because this is what the supplier offers us. And then experience the holding cost at uh, each at $4.20. But 576 is the EOQ for the second tier and it's out of the range. In other words, we cannot be buying 576 tires from our supplier and experience a discount at 1980. So, so it is not feasible in this range. When it is not feasible, all right, and it is to the left, then the best uh, order quantity will be the smallest uh, value in the range so it's 750 okay and again here we see that the eoq 579 is not available in this range 2000 to infinity and it is smaller than the minimum so it is to the left of the range and therefore again the best order quantity is 2000 all right so all these will be clearer when we look at the the three curves that are overlaid on top of each other. So all these are calculations which you can verify, uh, but I like to just bring us ahead to look at this curve because the, the as the saying goes, the um, picture tells a thousand words. So here in the first curve, uh,